Hello once again, my friends, fellow modelers, fellow historians, and fellow lovers of historic ships. I've got another little interesting video to share with you guys. Now, I recently did the history of the Bismarck. And if you're interested, I'll put the link in the description for that video. Um, well, I had gotten a model of the Bismarck. Well, let me just show you right now. I had gotten, I had seen this model first on eBay, and it was opened, and I was like, you know, this would be a pretty cool model to make, because it's in 1350 scale, and it's over two feet long, so I'm like, well, this would be a good, good model of the Bismarck. Well, when I had gone to buy it, it was already gone. Um, I had then found this one, but this one is actually still in the plastic wrap, so I had bought it a while ago. And this one is motorized. So I'm like, okay, this will be cool because I like to practice on the painting of the decks um, just so I could practice, you know, getting my skills together, my modeling skills. So when I make Titanic models, I'd be able to paint the decks and what have you. Also the, um, the USS Missouri. I know the battleship models that I had. I wanted to be able to paint them. So I figured I'd practice on this. Well, my wife got me the Trumpeter 1200 scale Bismarck for my birthday. And that thing is, is just immense. Well, think about it. The Bismarck is almost the same size as the Titanic. And the Titanic in 1200 scale is really huge. And so is the Bismarck. And by the way, I'll be doing a video for that uh, very soon. <clears throat> so... Which is kind of good because what I was thinking was with this one, when I went back to look this model up, um, I've seen a lot of the other version of the 1350 scale from Lindbergh, but not the motorized one for the Bismarck. And I kind of don't want to open this one because I really haven't seen this one since. Plus now I don't have to because I've got the Trumpeter 1200 scale. And let me show you this one. We've got Lindbergh, and this is in 1350 scale, so it's two, 25 and a half inches long. And this one is motorized. The main gun turrets operate, the guns elevate. And it actually, um, if I'm not mistaken, the propellers move and the ship actually sails. So we've got the German battleship Bismarck, motorized plastic model construction kit. And of course, I'll go through all the instructions with you because there's a lot to putting this together. And I'll show you what's in the box, and I'll show you the kit itself. Well, let's check out the, uh, the awesome painting that's on the front of the box. I mean, the people that paint these are just so talented. It makes me think of the way Ken Marshall has painted the Titanic through the years, as well as other ships. I don't know if Ken Marshall has painted the Bismarck, I'm not sure, but if anyone could, I'm sure it would be him. So this is the illustration that's on the front of the box, absolutely gorgeous. So when you look at the side of the box, you can see that this is kit number 762M. Again, we get that beautiful illustration of the ship. Ship follows a preset pattern, Bismarck. You can see she'll do a figure eight, a circle, or a straight line. The model is manufactured for the enjoyment and education value uh, purposes. On the box of all Lindbergh models, the age of the builder is taken into consideration. And I'm having a hard time reading this. In some cases, Notation will be made where parental guidance is suggested. The illustration does not always represent the exact contents of the box since most builders may wish to construct and finish their model using their own imagination. Due to various scales and sizes, this model may be smaller or larger as shown on the illustration. To reduce the colors in the illustration and the box front for a snap fit or glue type models, some painting is required. Paints and cement not included. 
<clears throat> so, taking a look at the ends of the box. Motorized authentic scale plastic replica. Again, 762M. And look at the price tag. Zeros. <laughs> that was a long time ago. And both ends of the box are the same. So let's take a look at the other side. We've got motorized German battleship Bismarck, manufactured by Limburg Products. And I believe this was 1979. As of yet, there's no kit on the box, but I will put it up. Main gun turrets operate, guns elevate. Electric motors included in kit, two D-sized batteries required. Batteries are not included. Yep, made and printed in USA, copyright 1979 by Lindbergh Products. And again, number 762M. And there's nothing on the back. So that's everything that's looked at, um, to show you everything on the box. So this is a really, really cool model. And again, um, I don't want to open it up just because I haven't seen it around very often. But let's go through the instructions right now. Lindbergh, the Lindbergh line, established since 1933. The assembly plans for kit number 762M, the German battleship Bismarck. To the 41,000 ton German battleship Bismarck was assigned the task of leading German warships in hit and run raids against British merchant and transport ships sailing in the Atlantic Ocean. While trying to break through to the Atlantic, the Bismarck encountered a British warship, the Hood, and the Prince of Wales. In a battle that followed, the Prince of Wales was badly damaged, and the Hood, pride of the British Navy and biggest warship in the world at the time, sunk. Every available British ship that could be spared was sent to find and destroy the Bismarck. In what was at the time remembered as the biggest British naval encounter in the early years of the Second World War. The British fighting against the superior enemy was destroyed and sank at 10.40 a.m. on May 27, 1941. Easy to assemble step-by-step -step instructions. Main Part 1, the main structure assembly. You've got the searchlights, the gun platform, the right main superstructure half, the left main superstructure half, and we've got the bridge, the top gun platform, the top bridge, and the stack gun platform. Step 2, we've got the forward range finder, top 12, forward range finder is 9, Left forward fire control, half. Right forward fire control, half. We've got the 3.7 centimeter twin mount guns. We've got the forward mast. And we've got the stack top, 14. And 7.65 millimeter machine guns, 15. And we've got the searchlight. Step three, we've got the rear gun platform. You got the rear mast that is going to go on, searchlight platform, the right rear superstructure half, the right rear finder, the antenna, the rear range finder, right gun platform, and a left gun platform, left rear superstructure half. Step four, left walkway, we got the searchlight, 7.65 millimeter guns. We've got the power launch deck. You can see the lifeboat as well. We got the right walkway. And the final rear superstructure assembly, cement right 26 and left 27. Rear fire control halves together. And cement one, rear fire control to rear gun platform. And the other fire control to black end of rear superstructure. Cement right 28 and left 29 walkways in place, and a cement deck 30 and hull 31. And you can see we're going to do the lifeboats and the power launch hull. Step 5 we got the main turrets, we got the guns, the bearings, we got the barrels, and we've got the short shaft gun plate and the long shaft gun plate. 
Place one gun bearing, 34, on each side of the main gun barrels. Do not cement gun bearings to gun barrels. Remember, these are gonna move. They're gonna go up and down. Cement gun barrel to gun plates. Gun barrels must be set as shown so they will raise and t when turrets are moved. Cement main turrets, 38 to gun plates and repeat assembly steps for all four. Step six, we insert, insert short shaft turret assembly to the front main gun base. The long shaft turret assembly into the rear gun base. Do not cement turret assemblies to gun bases as they must turn freely. Turn deck 41 over. Hold main guns with fingers while turning. Be sure gun barrels are pointed forward, then press and cement the short control horns, 42, to the shaft and position shown. Cement control horns from the top only. Do not get cement on the gun shafts. Place push rod A, 43, over pins on control horns, and place push rod B, 44, over pin and push rod A. Step seven, the turret assembly. Insert both main turret assemblies into the main gun base. Turret with short shaft in front gun base, long shaft in rear gun base. Do not cement turrets to gun bases as they must turn freely. Turn deck 41, overhold main guns while fingers while running, uh, while turning. Be sure gun barrels are pointed to the rear of the deck and press and cement the short control horn to the end along gun shaft in position shown. Do not cement, press and cement long control horn to push rod E in position to end of the short gun shaft as shown. Place push rods D46 and C45 over the pins on control horns and then press. Do not cement these push rods retainer caps. These must turn freely. Step eight, we got the completed linkage assembly, push rod B, push rod C. View of completed push rod linkage assembly, push rods B and C connect to the motor control bell crank and push rod E connects to the rudder control horn. Step nine, the final front deck assembly. Cement completed main superstructure assembly to the deck. Cement two capsons 50 to the front of the deck. Cement storage locker in place in back of the front main gun. Cement two 3.7 centimeter guns to the deck in the back of the rear main gun. Cement one medium gun turret 52 to each side of deck. Cement two 10.5 centimeter twin mount guns 53 to each side of the deck. Cement one center medium gun turret 54 to each side of the deck. Cement two lifeboats in position shown. Cement one torpedo tube to deck. And cement pontoons 56 to the bottom of the airplanes. And cement assembled airplane over catapult rails in position shown. Step 10, final rear deck assembly. Cement completed rear superstructure assembly to deck 41. Cement one caps and 50 to the rear of deck. Cement storage locker in place and back of forward rear main gun. And cement one 3.7 centimeter gun to each side of the rear gun placement. Cement one lifeboat to each side of the deck in position shown. Cement two 10.5 centimeter guns to each side of the deck. Cement one medium gun turret 52 to each side of the deck. Cement one torpedo tube to deck. Step 11, the bow assembly. Cement the right 61 and left 62 bow halves together and cement to the hull. Step 12, the rudder and shaft retainer installation. Insert one end of the rudder spring into the rudder control horn. Insert the other end of the spring into the spring retainer bar and insert the rudder through the bottom of the hull. Then press and cement the rudder control horn to the end of the rudder shaft in position shown. Cement control horn from the top only and do not get cement on the rudder shaft as it must move freely. Cement propeller shaft retainer in place but do not get cement into the prop shaft opening as shaft must fit through the opening. Step 13 is the gearbox assembly. Press the gear shafts into the rear wall. 
then slip gear B over rear gear shift, uh, gear shaft, and slip gear A over the front gear shaft till it sets against the, saw, the spacer pin. Place another gear over the rear shaft and the last gear over the front gear shaft. Then place the gear C over the rear gear shaft. Make sure the end of gear C and the front gear shaft are lined up correctly. Then cement the front and rear gear housing walls together. In order to prevent water from entering the hull, pack petroleum jelly inside of the hull where the propeller shaft passages through the hole. Step 14, bell crank assembly. Slip bell crank over bell crank mount pin and press. Do not cement. Bell crank retainer cap over pin to hold bell crank in place. Slip universal joint over small bell crank pin and press retainer cap to the end of the pin to hold the universal in place. The slip gear box push rod 78 over end of universal joint arm and press retainer cap to the end of the arm. Cement the bell crank mount to the front gear box wall. Press crank arm over square end of the gear and then connect the other end of the gearbox push rod to crank arm and press the retainer cap over the end of the crank arm to hold push rod in place. Step 15. Motor mount and switch assembly. Place the motor onto the motor base and heat the swedge pins. Press motor pinion gear onto the motor shaft. Collar on gear must face motor slip motor coupler. Couple it to the end of the motor shaft and then press the propeller shaft onto the motor coupler. The cement assemble gearbox to the motor base. Strip the insulation from the wire ends, making connections. Run the top motor wire through the holes in the motor switch arm and twist together. Cut a piece of wire four and a half inches long. Strip both ends and then run one end through the holes in the back of the switch plate. Then twist them together. Run the other end of the wire through the holes to the top battery retainer and twist together. Run bottom motor wire through the second set of holes in the top battery cap and twist together. Slip arm over the pin and back switch plate in cement. Cement the front and back switch plates together, but do not get cement on a switch arm as it must move freely. Slip switch extension 90 over switch arm pen and heat swedge end of the pin. Cut a piece of wire, three inches long, strip both ends, run one end through the holes in the bottom battery retainer cap and twist together. Run other end through the second set of holes in the battery cap and twist together. Step 16, motor mount and switch installation. Run the end propeller shaft through the opening in the hull bottom, then cement the motor mount to the bottom of the hull and the motor switch to the side of the hull. Install the one and a half volt D-sized batteries between the battery caps as directed and indicated. When motor mount and switch plate have dried, test run the motor. Step 17, drive prop and scale prop insulation. Press propeller 91 onto the end prop shaft. Hold shaft with fingers when installing the propeller and cement right and left prop shaft housing to the hull. Cement scale props 95 to the end of the housing. Remove the spring to push rod E. Use left over wire with insulation removed to make linkage as a sketch for straight pattern. For a circle, remove spring and push rod E. Use left over wire and insulation removed to make linkage as in a sketch from the circle pattern. Step 18. Push rod and deck installation. Slip push rod B onto the long bell crank pin, then slip push rod C into the same pin on top of the push rod B. Slip push rod E onto the rudder control horn pin and push switch arm extension through the switch opening on deck. Be sure push rods and the switch arm are all in place, then screw deck to the hull. Cement two anchors in place to, front, to the front of the deck, one anchor to the side of the rear hull. Press display stand base onto the hull bottom, but do not cement the stands to the hull as they must be removed when a model is in water. If the model runs backwards in water, reverse the directions of both batteries. All right, so you saw all the steps 
Um, it's pretty intricate, especially setting up the motors, um, the turrets. I'm going to try to find a working model. And if I can't find one, then um, maybe at some point we can build this. But for now, I want to keep it in a plastic just so, um, well, it's hard to find. And let's face it, when it's just still in a shrink wrap, um, it's a little more special. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until I show you guys the 1-200 scale version of this kit, I'll talk to you very, very soon.